If you live in the eastern part of the United States and especially Pennsylvania, you've been kind of on edge lately with the escape convicted killer basically being out doing whatever he wants to do for the last, what, two weeks two now? Two weeks. Stacey yeah, Stacy Cole and Carol Hughes here. Uh, yeah, this guy, Danilo Cavalcante, I can barely pronounce this guy's name. He has been escaped from custody for about two weeks now. He, they've had sightings of this guy. Um, and, and really, one thing that I really want to talk about is how the hell he got out in the first place. Did, Did you, you ever see, see the video? Yes, I just saw it today. That is the most insane thing I've ever seen. And what really bothers me is he's the second one to have done that same kind of move to get out. The other person they had captured right away. Like they saw him do it. They grabbed him. It was done. But they didn't fix this error in, in their whatever construction of this prison so that it couldn't happen again. And and this guy is obviously in great shape. He basically scaled the wall like climbed it using kind his of hands like and crab legs. like he put his yes. hands on one wall his feet on the wall behind him and then with his you know the front side of his body facing the ground he yeah. climbs up using both his legs and on his hands on one wall and his feet on the other wall how did they not put some razor wire up there or something I don't know. Uh, they better fix this because, and I'm thankful nobody was killed by this guy. He had nothing to lose. He was out on the loose for 13 or 14 days. He stole a weapon. He stole somebody's uh, Eagles uh, t-shirt, or not t-shirt, uh, sweatshirt, a hoodie from the, the football team. Um, and he's been on the run. He shaved his hair. Uh, I'm sorry. He shaved his beard and mustache. I think I don't know if he cut his hair or not. It I don't think so. It didn't look. It didn't look cut. He still had quite a bit of hair. Oh, did he? Okay, but he definitely changed his appearance. Oh, yeah. So he had access to something because I don't know what you'd find in nature that could shave your face. Because I heard a story. There was a a man who they were having problems locking the back door and. His daughter was really nervous about it because they couldn't get it locked. He's like, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Go to bed. He gets, he hears something. I think that camera's downstairs and he sees him in his house. Oh God. He, and then he's like, he was going to get his gun and go down and confront him. But then, you know, you've got a family. This is an escaped murderer. Is this the guy you confront? So he ended up turning on some lights or something from his phone and spooking the guy, and he ended up leaving. Whoa. Could you imagine? No. Or like the people, he went to some people he used to work with, went to their houses, and they've got video of him on their ring doorbell. And it's like, okay, I used to work with Danello, but I sure as shit ain't opening the door for him. Like, well, no. Nobody, I mean, who would help this guy? It's like, well, I, and that's something they're going to have to figure out, Carol, because for him to have been on the run for 14 days, it, you know, humans need food. They need water. They need, you know, some sort of sustenance to survive. And and I don't think he was finding it out in the woods. So somehow he was either, you know, scavenging dumpster, he could have in, done in dumpster people's diving. garbage. Yeah. But uh. there were so many people who were on high alert for this guy that I just, I have a hard time believing that people were thinking he might have been a homeless guy. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe he was under the radar somehow. You could fit um, in, I guess, pretty well, but they're looking for you. Right. And a lot of people were looking for him. They had all kinds of agencies looking for this guy. So it does, yeah, you do wonder, was some, did somebody help him? Did somebody hide him for a few days? Or was he just smarter than everybody for two weeks? I don't know. It'll be interesting to find out if if we do get those details. Because they probably have an idea, is my guess. But, like, this guy killed two people. You know, his girlfriend, which he was convicted of, but then there was a case in Brazil where this guy's killed somebody there. So how did he mm -hmm. even end up here? Did he, was he a, a legal immigrant? You know, I'm not sure of what his history is. Um, it's a really good question. I, I only know about, well, the fact that he got out, that he's extremely, 
able, you know, like Spider-Man able to scale walls and got out and, and, you know, who knows, does he have any military experience? Is that how he survived out in the woods? I don't know. I don't know, but thank God for dogs. Yes, a police dog had been deployed. They were using thermal imaging technology to track him down. It sounds like there was a thunderstorm in the area, so the the plane that was using this technology had to divert. But they did track him down. They found him. They discovered him asleep. He had a rifle that he was sleeping on, and he was caught off guard. Uh, they em- deployed a police dog, and the dog apprehended him, thank goodness, and, and thankfully the dog was not harmed. It sounds like he has a scalp injury from the encounter with the dog. Uh, but no other injuries reported to any officers, anybody nearby. And it sounds like they're going to keep him in state police custody for uh, for an extended period. He's going to undergo a medical evaluation. And then they were going to transfer him to a state correctional institution to continue to serve his life sentence. It is crazy. Like the fact that he did not kill anyone because this is a person I don't think who would hesitate to kill someone. No, especially he, I mean, he's desperate at this there. point. Yeah, he had nothing to lose. I mm-hmm. mean, what what's another person's life? He's already taken two. He didn't want to be in jail. He didn't want to be in prison. Like I said, he had nothing to lose. He could have just offed anybody he found. Was he a fugitive, though, from Brazil? In an interview with the New York Times, Cavalcante's mother defended her son's actions, asserting that he had killed his what girlfriend, girlfriend fiance yeah. after she allegedly threatened to inform American authorities about his status as a fugitive wanted by Brazilian police. So that makes me think that he got into the country illegally. Cause if you're a fugitive, they're not going to be like, oh, you're the person we want in this country. It's hard enough yeah. to get in here anyway. So that well, makes me think it's problem. illegal. Yeah. If I was his girlfriend and you find out that shit, I'd be like, <laughs> I mean, it would terrify me at the same time to know that I'm dating someone like that. You know, you don't always yeah. know people's history, but to find that out, the mother defended her son's actions. <laughs> There's no defense wow. of your son when he has killed someone as a fugitive and somebody else finds out and threatens to turn him in. There's no defense. Sometimes a mother's love is blind. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.